Welcome to my fourth and final tutorial on creating a threefold brochure. At the end of the last tutorial we completed these three panels and in this tutorial we'll complete the three panels that form the inside of the brochure. These are already three text boxes which are linked together and all I need to do to get started is insert the text into the first box. I have the text prepared in a document as always go in through the story editor and here's a deliberate mistake ah I didn't set a style first now every paragraph has no style M can make it a real pain to edit later so what I will do is delete all of that add a default style will be my body style paste my text in okay. update the frames and there you go we have the text this text looks something like what we're trying to create but without the headings and without the numbers and bullets let's first of all sort out the headings I can bring the story editor up on top of other things such as this PDF making this job very easy heading 1 for the first paragraph money is also heading 1 scholarships will be heading 2 University fees is heading two. A bit further on, we have entrance requirements heading one. That's all of those apart from this at the end here. Um, this is like heading one, except it's centered. Okay, so uh, I don't want to change everywhere I've got heading one, so I need to create a new style for that. And it's going to be based on heading one. So duplicate heading one change the name we'll call it something sensible like heading one centered and center it okay save that style and then apply it to this last couple of paragraphs heading one centered heading one centered and let's update the text frames Hybrid PDF, let's see. That's great. Okay, very much like the PDF now. Uh, the major difference being that we need to put these numbered lists in. So let's start doing that. Okay, so these two paragraphs here should be numbered list. I could start using my bulleted list to see how this works. Put my number dot space, update it, let's have a look. Okay, it's not bad, but the second line needs to be indented ever so slightly more, if I'm being fussy, and I am. So, I'm going to create a new style based on bullet list one. I'm going to duplicate it, as always, and change its name to numbered list one. And I've got an indent at the moment 3.9. I want ever so slightly more, so I'll just drag this along. 4.6 might do it. And then, of course, I need to change the paragraph style to be that number list and apply. Let's have a look. Yes, that moved a little bit. That's about perfect. I can apply it to the next paragraph. Number list. Put in my number, my dot, my space. Apply it. And that's great. Okay. There is another numbered list here, but you can see how you can use that style we just created to very easily number that second list. So let's move on. These paragraphs here should all be bulleted lists, so let's have a look at those. This is the first, so I'm going to try using the bulleted list that I already have defined. And then I'm going to insert character bullet. There's a bullet there for us nice and conveniently. Single space, because I'm trying to save space in this document, and apply it. And you can see that the second line is far too indented. Um, I can either put another space on the first line or just create a new style for this. And I'm going to create a new style. Edit styles, take my bulleted list one, duplicate it, don't change it. Rename the copy, bulleted list two. And the indent at the moment is 3.9. I need to reduce that quite a bit. 2.8 might work. Save. OK. And now apply it to the paragraph. Bulleted list.
minus 2. Yeah, that works. So then I can go ahead and apply that to the remaining paragraphs that I want to have the same style. Bulleted list 2. And then lastly, I need to copy the space and the bullet to the beginning of each paragraph. This seems to make it dash to the bottom, but never mind. Apply that. And there we have one complete bulleted list. We could also do exactly the same thing with this list over here, but I'm not going to waste your time doing that. You can easily do that yourself. To finish the document, all I need to do is to insert two images. Again, I'm just going to do one to save time. But what I do want is the text to flow around the image like this, not around a square box. Okay, I have shown you how to do this in an earlier tutorial, but I'll quickly run through it again. Put in a picture box get the image, in this case it's pound, it's a JPEG images, now as always image scale to frame size, um, I can then go to shape and text flows around the frame. The text now does flow around my square frame but that's not what I want, I want it to flow around the actual image. This image has a white background um, I don't know whether you'll see it on the video, but on my screen I can't see the green grid through it, so I know it has a coloured background. And in fact, JPEGs can't have transparent backgrounds. So, I'm going to right click it and choose Edit Image, so I can edit it into something that can have a transparent background. And that's a Pung file. Um, here in GIMP, on the Colours menu, I just choose color to alpha and it will create a transparent background. If that's grayed out you need to go to image mode and make sure you select RGB. It's only in RGB mode you can do this. Mine's very simple color to alpha, that's great. Save as and change its extension not JPEG, it must be a PNG, a PNG. It could actually be a GIF as well but stick with PNG it's a great format for images with transparent background. Okay, go with the defaults, it should be just fine. Okay, I'm going to reduce that down out of my way. And now I need to go and get that Pung image. There we go, I can now see the green grid. It has a transparent background. Okay, back to my properties box. Then I'm going to use a contour line to define how the text flows. And then I'm going to edit the shape of this contour line. In the new dialog box that clicks up, don't forget to click Edit Contour Line. Okay. Having done that, I'm going to add some nodes. Okay. The more nodes we have around here, the more flexible will be the way that we can alter this box. I'll just do a few to save time. Then I'm going to go to Move Nodes and start to move them. And this will define where the text wraps around. As you can see, the more nodes you add, the more flexibility you gain. I'm going to just say that's okay for now, to save time. In fact, I'm just going to pull that text away a little bit there. All right. End editing. That's that done. Okay. So I'm pretty much finished now. So first thing I must do is click Save, save my scribers file. And then I'm going to export it to PDF. Okay. Um, before I do that, however, I want to get rid of these labels that I've put on. Just They were just there to help me in layout. And if you remember, they are on a separate layer. So I go Windows, Layers, and this background layer, it's not the layer I'm working on at the moment, I can make it disappear. Make it invisible, I can bring it back, make it disappear. So I'm just going to turn that off completely. Now I've actually got a document that's finished. Click Save again, and then export it as PDF. Save as PDF, make sure it's going to the right place. You can change the path if you like. I'm, I'm happy with that one. Save it, and then it should go through and process a PDF. I can browse to the folder where it's creating it. 
here it is and let's have a look at the finished job okay that page looks great and the second page looks good too okay I haven't finished my numbers and my bullets I'll put the second image in but you could do that very easily I'm sure thank you for taking the time to listen I hope you found that tutorial useful